Okay, next job we're going to program is this one right here. We refer to it as the ballpark because it kind of looks like a ballpark. But what you'll notice on this print is uh, there's a bolt hole pattern that needs to be drilled in here. They call out 5 times 250 diameter equally spaced. They show the uh, radius of that bolt pattern is an inch and a quarter. And also we got a circular milled pocket here. Uh, the pocket is 750 radius, 200 deep. The material we're using is quarter inch aluminum. And um, the uh, other thing we're going to do is this outside shape right here coming around. So the way we're going to run this job is we're going to set the zero point up as zero, zero right in the center. Then I'll do the bolt hole pattern first. I'll do the circular pocket second. And then the last thing we'll do is the outside shape, which will be an arc event, a mill event, and another mill event. And we're on the two axis side of the control, so the programming is going to go fairly quick. So select the mode. I need to make a program. We're going to press program. It's got all these questions again. If you want to, you can just skip them. You don't even have to answer any of this. If you press go to begin, you're there. It always makes your part number zero, though, if you skip that front page. Select an event. Well, I want to do the bolt hole pattern first. So we'll go in here and press bolt hole. Here's the list of questions it's going to ask. First question, how many holes you want? Well, when you look at this, we got five, so we press five. Press abset. The center points are going to be X0, Y0. You can press zero and load it in, or if you just press the set key without any numbers given, it'll automatically load zeros for you. So on the Y center, I'll just press abset. The radius, they call that out as an inch and a quarter. So we'll type in, let's say I goof up. I type in 1.222. Whoop, that's the wrong number. To clear that bad number out, just press restore. It clears it out, so you can put in your correct number, inch and a quarter. Press abset. The angle. The angle references off of 3 o'clock, just like AutoCAD. If you tell it the angle is zero, it's going to position to put a hole at 3 o'clock. We don't want to start there. We want to be up here at 45 degrees. So we type in 45 degrees, load that in through the abset key, and tool number one. That looks fine. Let's press look and see how our graphics look. You'll notice we've got our zero point here. We've got five holes representing our bolt pattern. Everything looks good. To get back into programming, all you do is press look again. Brings you right back where you left off. Now we're going to do the circular pocket. I know it's a pocket because it says it's 200 deep, where the plate's 250 thick. So I come across here and select pocket. Select your geometry. Circular pocket, that's what I need for this job. Here's rectangle pockets, irregular pockets. Here is a circular pocket leaving an island standing up in the center of it, uh, like a boss, let's call it. So circle island, rectangle island, irregular island. You'll notice the blue question mark again. Let's see what's under the help key this time. Press help. It says set pocket and island cutter step over distance. Step over default is 70% of the cutter diameter. Please enter your cutter step over distance from 1 to 70%. 70% works for most people most of the time. Uh, however, I've been told if you run into some very exotic materials like Inconel or Hastelloy, high nickel materials, you have to cut this way down to maybe 20 or 30% to get through them because they're such a tough, tough material. We're just going to leave it at 70%. So we'll press return. I need a circular pocket. Press this key. Uh, first question, what is your X center point? Well, my X center is going to be zero, so is my Y is going to be zero for that circular pocket. So I can just press abset. It'll load zeros for me on X and Y. The radius on this is 0 0.75, 0 0.75 radius. Whoop, see there, I goofed up. Press restore, 0.75, there we go. Direction. Press 1 and set to go clockwise, 2 and set to go counterclockwise. So sometimes you want to climb mill, sometimes you want to do conventional cutting. You can go either way. For this, I'll press 1 for clockwise. Finish cut. Yeah, I'm going to take a 10,000th finish cut. It will automatically go in and hog out and leave 10. Then it'll come back around and skim the 10,000th out. And when it gets all finished, it'll pull off the side a few thousand just to keep it from leaving a dwell mark. The feed rate, 
I'm going to run pretty quick. I'm going to say uh, <clears throat> 20 inches a minute. The finish feed rate, we could slow it down to get a real pretty finish if you wanted to, but I'll leave it alone. We'll say 20 inches a minute. This will be tool number two, all right, because we're going to be using a 3 8 end mill to, to cut that pocket in. So that's finished. Now what we're going to do is the outside shape. I'm going to do an arc. I'm going to start right here on this corner, which is directly below the zero point for X. It's got a radius of 2.45. I'm going to start there. I'm going to swing an arc over to here, which is directly above X0. Then I'm going to come down here with a milli vent and another milli vent. So let's do an arc. What is your X beginning? I'm going to begin right there at 0. Press AB set. My Y beginning is 2.45 coming towards me, which is a negative. You can put the negative sign in before you put in the number, or you can put it in after you type the number in. Negative 2.45. X ending is going to be at zero. My Y ending, I'm going to end up here, which is a positive 2.45. Remember, you don't have to tell it positive. It, re it thinks all numbers are positive unless you tell it negative. Center points are going to be zero, zero. The Conrad. Conrad stands for connecting radius. This is where two moves connect together. You can round that corner off. So it's asking me, when it gets to the end of that arc and it goes into another move, if we want to round the corner off, well, that's a sharp corner. So I do not want to round that off. Press zero, loader in. Direction. I started here. I went this way. So it's got to be counterclockwise. Press two and set for counterclockwise. Press two and set. Now, two offset. This is one of the very important things you've got to learn to run a prototrack. First thing you've got to learn is which way is plus and minus. Here's the second thing you got to learn. Since this is a geometry-based control, we told it to make an arc. It doesn't know where to put the cutter yet. So it wants to know, do we want the cutter on the center of the line? Do we want the cutter on the left of the line? Or do we want the cutter over here on the right side of the line? We want to be over here on the right side. So to be cutter right, it says press one and <coughs> excuse me one and set for tool right, one and set. Now I'm going to stop here and make a comment. In the book, it shows you certain examples of which ways cutter left and cutter right, but there's a little rule of thumb that will always work for you, and that is if you imagine you're standing behind the cutter, and the cutter's going away from you, then you determine if you're cutter left or cutter right. So in this example, we started here, we went this way. So let's say we're standing here, the cutter's going away from me, I'm cutter over on the right side. However, if I had started the job up here and I came around this way on the part, now to see, to keep it straight in my mind, I need to turn it around like this. I'm behind the cutter, it's going this way, that would be cutter over on the left. So that little rule of thumb will always work for you. Just imagine you're standing behind the cutter and it's going away from you. But the way we ran this job is we started here, we went this way, so I'm behind the cutter, I'm cutter on the right side of the line. Okay, feed rate, it's all for me. The last feed rate I gave it, which was 20 inches, we'll go ahead and use that again. Just load it in. Tool number, same end mill, tool number two. Continue, yes, we're going to continue. It only asks you this question on the two-axis side of the control. You'll see in a moment when we get over to the three-axis, it does not ask that question. So am I going to continue? Well, yeah, I am because I've got the arc, but I still need to make two more moves. So press 1 for yes. Let's take a look at what we program. So we've got our bolt pattern in there, our circular pocket. We've got the arc. Everything's looking good. To get back into program again, all you do is press look. Puts you right back where you were. Now what we're going to do, we're sitting right here, we're going to do a straight line mill to that corner there. Continue mill. You'll notice it doesn't ask for any beginning points, and that's because we're continuing on with the same cutter. So the X ending, it's got a dimension here, 3 inches 064. That's going to be to the left, which is negative, negative 3.064. The Y ending, there's a little offset right here, 0 0.5045. Type that in. The Conrad, yes, we want to round that corner off with an 841 radius. So we just type in the radius we want. 
The prototrack will do all the calculations of where the tangent point is and where half the cutter is at some angle and all that. It does all that automatically. You just tell it the radius you want, 841. Now one other thing about Conrad's, the moves have to be connected to round the corner. You can't have a gap and tell it to fill a gap. That doesn't work. They got to touch, they got to con connect, then it'll round the corner. It's asking me and we're going to continue. Yes, we are. We've got one more move. All right, now if I press look, you'll see there's the milli vent, but there's no radius yet because it doesn't know what we're going to be hooking into. So we need to put the other move in before it'll put the radius in there, the Conrad. Press look to come back into program. We're going to do one more continue mill. This time we're sitting here. We're going to come down to where we started. X of zero is our ending point. The Y is 2.45 negative. Conrad, nope, don't need one. Now, are we going to continue? No, we're all finished. Press no. And there it is. So the program is all finished up. But let's say that we had an engineering change. And all of a sudden they say, uh, we need to change the size of that Conrad, that 841 radius. We want to change that to 831. And the first thought to you is, where in the program is that to go in and make that change? And what's very nice is as you're looking at your graphics, there's a button here called List Step. When I press that, it'll list the program on the left side. It'll show you where you are on the part on the right side. Press List Step. Event 1, you'll see it's highlighted there in pink. There's the bolt pole pattern in pink. Hit it again. There's Event 2 is a circle pocket. Event 3 is the arc. Event 4, that's where we need to go in and make our change. So now when I press my look button, it'll put us right on event four and we could data forward and change the Conrad to 0.831 abset. It's all fixed. So it's very easy to go find where in the program you need to be to make a change to it. So our program's all finished. Now in this job, we need to go ahead and set up our tooling. So the basic three steps that you got to every program is program the job, set up your tools, and set up your zero part. Those are the three steps you need to do on every job. So we finished our program, we verified it with the graphics, all look good. So now let's go in and set up our tools. We'll press setup, tool table, and the tool table in this control travels with the two axis side over to the three axis side. So it brings the tool table with it no matter whether you're on the three axis or two axis side of the control, which is nice, but it can also get you in a little bit of trouble. And that would be, let's say a, a person got on this machine, they went in and set up tooling, and that was earlier in the day, then you came to use the machine and you thought, well, I'm just going to be over here on the two axis side, so you kick it over on the two axis side and the old information is still in here from the first job that the other guy ran, what can happen is you get ready to run your little job. When you press the go button, it runs back and looks into the tool table for any tooling information. So you may have set up your tool number one without telling the control. And when you go to run your little job and you press go, it runs back and looks at the old information in the tool table and it messes you up. So what I would recommend whenever you come up to this machine to use it, always go into the tool table and erase the table. Start out fresh. Are you sure you want to erase the tool table? All current tool data will be lost. Yes. And that way you don't have to worry about the old information coming over to get you in trouble. Now because it carries the tool table with it from the two axis to the three axis side, it always asks questions here that are related to the three axis. So currently, it wants to know where the reference position is. And if you're on the two axis side of the control, you don't even have to worry about that. You just press abset. And you'll notice there's two numbers in red, tool one, tool two. Those are your active tools for this job. And what we're going to do, it wants to know what's the diameter of tool one. Well, that was our quarter inch drill. Type in 0.25. Z offset. This is a three axis question. This is where you bring your tools down and touch them off. But since we're on the two axis side, we're going to cheat and we're just going to skip it. And wants to know what kind of tool you got. Number one is a drill. So we just press one and load that in. 
tool two is our 3 8 end mill, 0 0.375 is the diameter. We're going to skip over the Z offset question. That's for the three axis side. And here uh, we can say it's a roughing end mill or finishing end mill. Either one works. It's just what words come up on the screen to tell you what tool to put in. So we'll say it's a roughing end mill, number three. Now, there's one other thing. When we get over to the three axis side, you're going to see there's a little more work to get the machine set up. But on this two axis side, this is all you got to do. It's very quick, very easy. So, so far, I made my program. That's step number one. I verified the graphics. Number two, I set the tooling diameters, which is all you really need for the two axis side. And step number three is set up the zero point on the part. We do that using the digital readout. Press mode, go into digital readout. And now what we're going to do is wind the table over there and pick up a zero point. We're just going to guess at the center of the part here. I'm going to go over to course on the hand wheels. And we're going to say that looks pretty good for our zero point. So to zero it out, I just press X, abset, Y, abset. So now it knows that right there is where I want my zero point to be. So let's go ahead and run the job. We press mode to come out front. We go into run, and we want to start the job. Ready to begin, press go when ready. So again, I can press the go button, or I can use this remote stop go switch right here. So I'm going to press the switch, press go. It tells me to load in tool number one. It's a 250 diameter drill. Start the spindle and press go for CNC run. All right, the drill's already in there. I'm going to turn the spindle on and press go with the clicker. We're going to come down and drill that hole. Press go, drill that hole. Also, while you're running your work, you can look at four different things. You can look at the absolute positioning, which is what it does automatically. Or you can press this key and look at incremental information. You can press this key to look at your cutter path. Or you can press this key to look at your program all while you're running. Let's look at the cutter path. I'm going to press go again. Drill that hole. Drill this hole. Drill that hole. Press go one more time. It says load in tool two. It's a 3 8 diameter roughing end mill. All right, so I need to turn it off, change out my tool. I'm going to wind over. Yeah, let's see here. I need to raise my head up or just wind over here because the tool is too long to get out of there. Yes, sir. Okay, so where I left off is we need to change our tool and the head was down too low to where I couldn't get it out, so I just went over to digital readout, cranked the table over, and let's take this tool out. And when you take the tools out, make sure you bring the spindle all the way up and lock it, then press the out key. Take that tool out. We're gonna put our 3 8 end mill in. There we go. All right. Press in. All righty. Now I'm going to bring the head down. Press jog, negative, Z. That's good enough right there. All righty. Now we're ready to go back into the run the job. Press run. And I don't want to rerun the drill. That was event number one. So I'm going to use start event number. Tell it to start at event two, which is our circular pocket. Press abset, start event with rough or finish cut. I need to do the roughing cut. This is pretty nice because if you ran the job and your diameter of that pocket came out, let's say 2,000 is too small, you could go in and lie to it about the cutter diameter, tell it instead of 375, it's 373, so it would move over your 2,000 you need, and then just tell it to run the finish pass. So it's pretty good. So I, I want to do the roughing, though. I haven't started this part. Press rough. And are starting pass one through one. Well, this has only got one pass in it. But if you had programmed, say, three passes, it's asking you, do you want to start at one, two, or three? On this job, we're going to start at one. Press abset. It's ready to begin. Press go when ready. I'm going to use my remote stop go switch here. Press go. 
tells me to load in tool two. It's a 3 8 diameter roughing end mill. I did that. Now I'm going to start the spindle and press go. Now on this job, they want that pocket to be 200 deep. So what I can do is turn my spindle off, bring my tool down to the top of the part and hold it there and press Z abset. So that's my zero point right at the top of the part. Start my spindle back up and take it down to the depth that we need. I'm gonna go 200 deep. And I'm going to kick the feed rate down just a little bit because I got it a little fast uh, in the program. I'm in feed rate and I'm dropping it down to 50%. All right, now we're going to press go and it'll start milling the pocket out over here. And again, you can stop it at any time by using the remote stop go switch or the stop button up here. So I can press stop and just press go, it takes right back off again. So it's very friendly to stop and start it. Oh, yeah, a little air. Now it's going around taking out the finish cut. It says check Z. That means raise your tool up out of the part. This is real important when you're on the two axis side. Because even though it tells you what to do, it doesn't know if you did it or not. And if I don't raise it up and I hit go, it'll bust the tool. So I'm gonna raise it up, then press go. Here it says set Z. Now I'm not gonna go to full depth here. We're just gonna get enough to get an impression. We'll go 10 deep and press go. So now we're milling out the circ the arc. We can show the cutter path here. We're coming around that arc right there. And again, you can stop it at any time. Let's say we had a clamp right there. We could just hit stop, put another clamp on, take the other one out of our way, and hit go, it takes right back off. So it's very friendly. Yeah. Good point. What you're seeing here in the graphics, this is a different set of graphics. This is the tool path which on the toolpath graphics, it'll show it being on the center of the cutter. Even though when we programmed it, we told it to be on the right side, there's actually two sets of graphics. As soon as it gets done running this, I'll show you. You got two sets of graphics. One is the program, which is what we had been looking at. The other is the toolpath graphics. And when you're on toolpath, like we are right now, it'll always show it on the center of the line. Now it says check Z, that means raise your cutter up. Press go, and it tells you the run's over, it's all finished. So that's a quick little demo on the two axis side.